Welcome to the second video of the CCO Insights series. In this session, we are going to show how the governance dashboard works and which is the content of the different pages. Perfect. So um, we ended up the first video by downloading the content of the repository. Now we're going to start today by opening the Power BI desktop and then opening the governance report. So we're going to go to downloads, the folder that we unzipped, and then need to make sure that it's the template type of file that we're enabling in that uh, browse, browse reports. So um, the first thing would be selecting that Azure kind, in our case was the global, so we clicked on connect, and there are two different type of sources that we're connected against. The first one is the management API, for which we need to select that organizational account. Now we're going to use our organizational credentials to sign in and then connect against um, the management API. And the second one, it's going to be the custom connector that we configured in the previous chapter. So after it's successfully connects against the management API, then it pop ups with um, the custom connector for the CCO dashboard and there only the organizational account type of login is allowed. So we're going to introduce our credentials and um, after successfully logging, we'll be able to connect and then the download of the data from the two different sources is going to start. Now in this video, it took really less time to load all the information, but this can take up to several minutes to load the data depending on how big your environment is. Now, once the dashboard is loaded, then we have different tabs available. The first one would be the hierarchy overview. This one is showing this hierarchy type of graph with all the different management groups and subscriptions that your user has access to. And now if we come back to this graph and double click on any of the resources, then it will load the child resources for those management groups, as you can see here, until we get to the subscription level. The second one is about tax. So we have in the left pane, we have different filters for management groups and subscriptions. And then you have information in the different graphs about how many resources are intact, what type of tax are available, what are the top tax resources or the top tax tax uh, with most number of resources. The third tab would be the regulatory standard compliance. And now for this one, once we've selected the subscription, we can see different uh, policies related to different regulatory standards as uh, PAC DSS. So we can find here the number of healthy resources and unhealthy resources. The fourth tab is the security and compliance. And here we can filter uh, by the type of severity from medium, low, high, and identify what are different resources uh, with those severities, the policies assigned to them. Now, when it comes to policies, we can also check to other type of resources that are not necessarily related to the regulatory standards or the security compliance. And here we can even filter by the policy scope finding how many non-compliant resources we have for that specific policy, the description of those policies, and the details on the um, resource name and the resource type. And finally, we have the Azure Blueprints with an overview of the different Blueprints we have enabled and how many resources it has assigned. So with this, um, Yuridi, I have a couple of questions as in the previous video. Now, um, is the custom connector that we configured before required for this dashboard? So the answer is yes. We need to use the uh, custom connector because some of the uh, APA calls we are making are using a POST method with an empty body. And this is something that we cannot do by default with Power BI. So it requires to use uh, this uh, custom connector to run these kind of uh, APA calls. OK, good that we configured that before then. Um, also, a common issue that I've seen, um, you know, as part of the uh, repository is that may the maps type of graphs not show the right data. Now, what could be the most common reason for this one? Yeah, please. And this is important. Uh, we need to verify that the regional settings of Power BI are uh, turned to English because by default Power BI is detecting our uh, keyboard setup. In our case, for example, is detecting uh, Spanish and because uh, latitudes and longitudes are different uh, in English and in, in Spanish, 
uh, probably the map will be empty. OK, good. And um, something that I've seen also with different customers, can I configure an auto refresh for the dashboard? Sadly, currently not. So this is something that uh, it will be implemented in the future, but right now with the Power BI uh, desktop version, it cannot be uh, implemented. OK, good. So it's in the roadmap. That's good. And uh, can I publish the Power BI online? You can publish it, but it will be an static image. So again, you cannot uh, enable the auto refresh. OK, and then the last question, where can I contact the development team in case I have any issues? So if there is something not working well on the governance dashboard, just go to the GitHub repo and open an issue. So the development team will take a look at it and will fix it if needed. Perfect. Thank you so much. You.